Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we were having the Bible study on the book of Jonah. Now we have reached the chapter 2. Let us read chapter 2. We, were, we left Jonah in the belly of the fish. And he must be tired inside the belly of fish. Let us see, uh, read this chapter 2 verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Now, we need to understand, is it really a story or is it really happened? You know, how is it possible that somebody being swallowed by a fish and then he survived in the fish belly and he's kneeling down in the belly of the fish and praying and these all are not practically, logically, it is impossible. Therefore, many people even reject this story as just an imaginary story. But we all know from the Bible, even from the other books, that there was a prophet Jonah who lived in Israel. There was a prophet Jonah, there was a Nineveh city, and there was a Assyrian city who is also the pagan city who is the enemies of Israel. So it's all fact. But this being alive in the belly of the fish is one problematic question with many people confused with. But one thing is sure. What the church, the church officially teaches is, Jonah, in fact, died in the belly of the fish. Dot, Jonah could not be alive in the belly of the How is it possible for some a human being to be alive? And, you know, it is also possible that a huge fish can swallow human beings. We know the huge, the biggest animal on the earth are in the fish, in the water. The blue whale is the biggest one. And then the same way they used to have huge uh, fish, huge fish which are capable of swallowing huge human beings inside. It was possible and it was there. Even now it is there and it may be there those days more than now. So it is possible that a huge whale or something like this, a huge fish come and, and eat Jonah. But to survive three days inside the belly of the fish, it is impossible. Though it is possible for God, and God can do many things, but in reality, when you read these passages, we know Jonah, in fact, literally died in the belly of the fish. It is not possible for him to survive in the belly of fish without food, without, uh, without drinks, without even proper oxygen, without all these. It's not easy for uh, anyone to survive in the belly of the fish. Because the belly of the fish, there is a digestive process also takes place. Therefore, the acid which is there in the belly, uh, the stomach of the fish cannot, uh, I mean, will, uh, will not allow any human being to survive in the belly. So it's natural that he may have died and it is true that he, he died. So how do we know from the Bible passage to prove and support the idea that Jonah died? There are so many reasons why we believe that Jonah died because Jesus himself quoted about Jonah, book of Jonah. The incident of Jonah, Jesus himself quoted. So it may be a real incident. That is maybe the reason Jesus himself quoted. We read Matthew chapter 12 verse 39. We read like this. Matthew chapter 12 verse 39. The word of God says, when people asked Jesus, give us a sign Show us a sign that you are the Messiah. Then Jesus answered them, An evil and adulterous generation asked for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So what is the sign of Jonah? You know, in the Old Testament, you will never see any prophecy about the Messiah to be killed and be risen on the third day. There is no prophecy in the Old Testament about the resurrection of Jesus. Death and resurrection on the third day. Of, on the third day, the resurrection. This prophecy is nowhere in the Bible. Therefore, it was impossible for, it was difficult for many uh, people, many Jewish people to believe that Jesus was risen from the death. Because there is no prophecy. But Jesus says, there is a prophecy. And Jesus said, there is only one prophecy. And the prophecy, the sign of Jonah. What is sign of Jonah? Jonah, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster. So it's 
Jesus says sea monster. It's a special fish. May be appointed and created only to swallow Jonah. So for three days and three nights, the son of the same way he was in the belly of the fish. Three nights, three days. What does it mean? So these three days he was dead and buried in the belly of the fish. He was dead because Jesus himself was dead and he was in the belly of the earth for three days. So Jesus died and he was in the belly of the earth three days. The same way Jonah died and he was in the belly of the fish for three days. And on the third day, Jesus was resurrected. The same way, on the third day, Jonah will be raised. So this is the only sign will be given to you to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. This is what Jesus is quoting now. Now let's go back to Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 onwards. And let's see how do we prove that Jonah died in the belly of the fish. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Then was, you know, he's praying in the belly of the fish. You know, it's not possible to pray, somebody pray in the belly of the fish. But was he really praying from the belly of the fish or somewhere else? Let's read. Saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. I cried and you heard my voice. He said, I am praying from the out of the belly of the Sheol. Sheol means hell. Sheol means the land of the dead. Sheol is the land of the dead. And he says, Jonah said, out of the belly of Sheol I cried. That means he already reached the land of the dead. His soul is already departed. The body is in the belly of the fish. His body is in the belly of the fish, but his soul is already departed and his soul is crying from the Sheol. Sheol is the land of the dead. He is crying from the land of the dead. He cried and God heard his voice. God heard his prayer. And God is giving him back his life. And that is how he is resurrected. So he says, out of the belly of Sheol I cried. He didn't say, out of the belly of the fish I cried. He said, I go to the belly of the Sheol. Sheol is the land of the dead. As you all know, Sheol means the land of the dead. Verse 3. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Now he's narrating how he died. He, he was thrown into, he was thrown from the, from the ship, he was thrown into the sea. You know, Though he was thrown into the sea, God has not finished with him yet. God, God has not finished with him yet because he, he needs to be purified. My dear brothers and sisters, if God has a plan for you, if God has desired to prune you, he will not finish, you, finish with you so soon until you are purified. God has, if God has a plan for you, even if you try to escape in any way, Somehow God will bring you back to that plan of God. He will surely bring. If you are obedient, you will reach the plan of God and fulfill the plan of God faster. If you are disobedient, it will be delayed, but still it will be fulfilled. Because if we know Mother Teresa, God had a plan for Mother Teresa, but Mother Teresa joined the Loreto Convent and she was in teaching and she was in the teaching field and she came to Calcutta and she was busy with many things, but she was restless. Wherever she was, she was, she was restless. She was restless. At the end, when she found the real mission which God has appointed for her, she was restful. She was happy. My dear brothers and sisters, unless and until you fulfill the plan of God in your life, you will be restless. Wherever you go, you will be restless. Because there is a plan of God that has to be executed in your life. St. Augustine of Hippo, when he was leading an immoral life, he was into worldly things, he was, he was into gamblings, he was into wrong relationship, immorality. Wherever he went, he was restless. And at the end, he came back to God and then he cried and said, Lord, I am restless until I rest in you. He said, Lord, I am restless until I rest in you. My dear brothers and sisters, if God has a plan for you, he will make sure that it is executed. If you take a diversion, 
God will allow obstacles after obstacles in front of you so that you will come back to the real plan of God. Every obstacle, any time when you see a mess here, look out there and there is a message waiting for you. And this is exactly what happened to Jonah wherever he went. He had obstacles after obstacles. He didn't know. But at the end he surrendered to the plan of God and then he was thrown into the sea. When he was thrown into the sea, God did not abandon him. Even in the sea, God is taking him through a process of pruning, a process of purification. He was allowed to die and rise back. To die in the fish, belly of the fish, and he was in the Sheol, he repented, he cried, and then God heard his prayer and blessed him, gave him back the life. So, God has not finished with him yet. Let's continue reading. We read like this, Jonah chapter 2. For then I said, I am driven away from your sight. I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? So he is feeling terrible pain in his heart. What was his pain? I am separated from you. The biggest pain he experienced in the, in the, you know, he was in the Sheol. Sheol means it's a kind of hell, the land of the dead. In the land of the dead, he, the biggest pain he experienced was separation from God. He said, I am driven away from your sight. Now how shall I look at the temple? My dear brothers and sisters, the biggest pain that we are going to experience, the biggest pain that we are going to experience in the hell is the separation of God. You know, I have seen many people, love failures. When they have love failures, they are ready to commit suicide. Because they have missed their love. Missed, they cannot tolerate that separation. So the extreme pain is the love failure. That is what one person said. The extreme highest pain is the love failure, not physical pain. And some people, out of this pain, they even cut their body and ready to take the pain in the body. Because the pain that they are going through, mental agony, is the terrible pain. They can't tolerate. Therefore, they think of committing suicide. The same thing happened between mother and father, and between mother and child. Between husband and wife, between lovers, between many people, this love failure, this separation, extreme pain. And when you experience this pain for eternity, that is called hell. In the hell, this is the pain, the terrible pain that we are going to experience. Our soul is going to experience this separation from God. And we can't tolerate this pain. It is unimaginable. If we are here on earth, we can at least commit suicide. But in the hell? And this pain is the extreme pain. And Jonah says, I am driven away from your sight. He is crying in front of God. I am driven, I am separated. That is why when King David committed sin, he had seen when the King Saul committed sin, the presence of God departed from Saul and evil spirit came and tortured Saul. David watched this. David had seen him being tortured by the devil. It was David who was singing harp and tambourine and helped Saul to get deliverance from the evil affliction. Therefore, David knew it is terrible to be separated from God. If the spirit of God departs from somebody. It is extremely terrible. He knew this. And that is why. When he committed sin of adultery. And murder. He knew. He is going to miss God. He is going to lose the presence of God. Therefore. Immediately he repented. And cried in front of God. And lifted the hands and prayed and said. Forgive me. How mercy on me. And he cried out and said. Psalm 51 verse 11. And he said Lord. If you want to take me away from me. Do that. If you want to take my kingship away from me. Do that. If you want to take my strength away from me. Do that. If you want to take my family. Your ch my child away from me. You do that. If you want to kill my child. Kill my family. Do that. But do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. 
if you want to take everything away from me you do that my family my children you know his child died he allowed he was okay with that when his child was killed as a result of the adultery committed he was okay with that he said if you want my child to be dead do that if you want to take my family take that if you want to take my kingship take that but do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me he knew it is terrible to be separated from god now jonah in the belly of sheol is crying i'm cast out from your sight how shall i look again upon your holy temple he is crying bitterly in the in the sheol verse 5 we read like this the waters closed in over me the deep surrounded me the weeds were wrapped around my head he is experiencing the terrible loneliness terrible darkness terrible pain he is explaining it and verse 6 we read like this at the roots of the mountains i went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever i went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever what is what is that land where the door is closed once and for all that is the land of the dead land of sheol where the people are thrown down and this land the doors are bars are closed once and for all he said i am thrown into this land yet you brought up my life from the pit pit means sheol he says yet though i was locked once and for all i was dead though, though i was thrown into the sheol yet you brought up my life you gave me life back from the pit from sheol you gave me back life he is speaking about his resurrection oh lord my god was seven we read like this as my life was ebbing away you know he is speaking about when my life was going away when my when i was dying my prayer came to you into your holy temple and that is why you saved me you gave me back my life continue reading verse 8 those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty now he says those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty he says he was worshiping idols in the sense he was supposed to be loyal to god faithful to god but he has his own ideologies therefore he was not loyal to god he was escaping from god now he is understanding his mistake and he says i was an idolater because i worship my own ideologies instead of being loyal to you that is what he says those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty and then continue but but with the voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you i with the voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you sacrifice his thanksgiving is a sacrifice what i have vowed i will pay deliverance belongs to the lord now he is promising god what i have vowed i am a prophet i am supposed to lead a good life holy life i have supposed to fulfill the vows that i have taken i am a child of god i am a christian i am supposed to preach the gospel and i am supposed to share my faith to my family and my neighbors from everyone i what i promised to god i will fulfill then the deliverance will come my dear brothers and sisters when you promise to god what you are supposed to do when you promise to god what you have already vowed when you are ready to be fulfilling that vow then the deliverance will come to you then the deliverance happens to you then all the affliction that is binding you will be out the lord will deliver you and then your thanksgiving and praise will become a sacrifice we we have taken so many vows my dear brothers and sisters we have promised to god we will take a good early morning and pray the divine mercy we will go for regular holy masses we will go for frequent confessions we will get rid of black magic we will get rid of black addiction to smoking drinking and uh, all kinds of bad habits we have promised to god many times we have taken vows in front of god many times but we have disobedient we have disobeyed and as a result calamity is clinging upon us 
the lord says if you promise fulfill the vow deliverance will come to you praise the lord then was 10 then the lord spoke to the fish and it spewed jona out upon the dry land then the lord spoke to the fish what does it mean this fish is even now he is in the control of god not only when the fish swallowed him and killed him even after that the fish is in the control of god not only when the sickness comes to you even after that even to take away the sickness and cancer and all these things god is in charge god is in control when not only when your business collapsed before the business collapsed god is in control even after the business collapsed god is still in control he can bring you back everything i remember one person came and said father now i am it is impossible to escape i have a huge debt i cannot come out nobody can help me then i told him god is still the same before before all these things happen god is in charge now is also god is in charge even after this god is in charge nothing is impossible for him we even not only when the fish came and swallowed him and killed him even after that god is in charge the same fish can vomit you out and give you back life you can start everything back to square one you just need to believe you net need to believe that god is in charge even now even when you feel everything collapsed all the dreams shattered now no help from coming from anywhere even then believe god is still in charge jesus is in charge he will bring you back everything what you have lost then the lord spoke to the fish the same fish who destroyed him the same fish who killed him the same fish who swallowed him to the same fish god said vomit him out and now the fish is running to nineveh to vomit him out let jona be there one more day we will study the rest tomorrow praise the lord